Collins. He'll be the, the major exactly. leader. So of we don't know who that's going to be yet. No. No. But isn't that all. interesting? Because if you think about uh, Juan Carlos, he was out there during the uh, Franco's reign. He was Jesuit trained. Yeah. In Italy. Trained in Rome. Yeah. In Rome. And he was brought into Spain yeah. to take over. Yeah. And and you talked about the uh, prophecies that were uh, the scholars, the Anglo-American um, scholars talked about this in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, that what would happen, Lenny? Yeah, they, they talked about the fact that it would be a Habsburg, uh, just studying ancient Roman history and n- knowing the history of the of the Roman Empire and those trying to resurrect it uh, know that scholars know that the Habsburg family were always laying claim to the throne of uh, the emperor and becoming the emperor of Rome, the Caesar, and the the chances that the final emperor of of uh, the resurrected Holy Roman Empire would be a uh, would be a Habsburg was the odds were pretty good it would be a Habsburg and so we're not saying that. It's, it's Juan, Juan Carlos, Carlos but, but he's certainly on a short list. Right. And it's interesting to note that he his title is also King of Jerusalem. Right, King of Jerusalem. All of these things yeah. start to fit in because Rome basically is just a temporary capital right. for that Roman Empire, whereas Jerusalem is what they the plan. want to claim back, the right. planned permanent right. em- uh I guess it would be the permanent location for the Roman Empire. Exactly. So it's basically, you know, we can go back to all the Crusades, and this is, we're yeah. into another crusade, basically. Yeah. And, of course, yeah. we're watching for the the rebuilding of the temple on, uh, and yep. the starting of the daily sacrifices yep. uh, and the abomination of desolation where the man of perdition comes into the temple and claims to be God and claims to be emperor of the planet, the Caesar. The Caesar, and the, that would be the, we can the, call him the Antichrist. Which, and that would be the Antichrist. Yeah. He would claim to be God, but he would just be a man. But he would use pyrotechnics and high-tech devices yeah. and high-tech illusions and sleight of hand to make it look like he was killed and came and, back, and came to, back life. to life. And we know they can do that so easily sure, now. Sure, sure. It's very easy. Yeah. Just look at 9-11. Now, um, okay, so what have you got there, Lenny? Let's let's quickly take a look. Well, I noticed uh, one of the interesting things is in the uh, I- I- the Associated Press has an article this week where the world scientists have agreed to collect more precise global warming data in face of deniers' barbs. So, what kind of data so, do you think they're going to get? They've already already they've been shown yeah. to be corrupt with their science and once again mrs Steele, we stand here on the shoulders of giants marshall McLuhan talked about how the arts and sciences were in the pockets of the secret societies and he specifically named them as the gnostics the rosicrucians the freemasons and popery so we stand on the shoulders of McLuhan, and we stand on the shoulders of many others, Jim Garrison, as well as John F. Kennedy, who in his secret society speech talked about how the United States and the future of the United States as survival, it was under attack by some very, very... Uh, A monolithic, ruthless conspiracy? conspiracy. exactly. Yeah. yeah. So this is, uh, and of course this week we um, had an article in the Globe and Mail by Michael Posner <coughs> about Richard, uh, about all, not just, uh, there's a picture I've of Richard got it Surratt. Here. Yep. Doesn't Our Richard conspir- look great? He looks great. Our conspiracy theorist infiltrating the media. Syria, suspicious minds question what's behind Torontonians' fascination with late night radio rebels. Well, Lenny, I just wanted to say thank you very much that I'm in the company of all these uh, great gentlemen. <clears throat> I mean, it's just wonderful. Um, it was a real pleasure to. Uh, you know, meet everybody, and I get to work with Lenny Bloom and well, George. Yeah, and it's fantastic. Yeah, George you is know doing what, a great job, yeah. and, 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 and we should also add, um, uh, when I was at Mojo, before I was uh, uh, kicked off Mojo for bringing Andreas von Bülow, the head of German intelligence. I heard you were thrown into jail, Lenny. Uh, they they were very angry with me. I know. Uh, before that, I, also, I worked 
there, and um, I didn't with work Richard with Gary Surratt? Bell. Did you? But work? Gary Bell used yeah. to uh, look at do the engineering. Oh, I see on, his name when, there. Yeah, when Mr. I did Bell. the when I would do my promos, uh, he would do the engineering. And uh, he does a, a very, very interesting and thought-provoking show called The View from Space. I, I can see So the there, real yeah. question is, in Toronto, we have a burgeoning group of people. We're on the outskirts of North America. We're on the margins. And if you're on the margins, it's the only vantage point to see what's going on in the center. So that's one of the reasons why Toronto, uh, certainly McLuhan being here and the in his influence, as well as us being on the margins, allows us to see the center. And uh, so whistleblowers like McLuhan and others spawn this group of intellectuals and people who aren't bamboozled or fooled by the propaganda and can see behind the, the global theater's uh, scaffolding and the scenery and see backstage like Toto the doggy about uh, the men who are pulling you know the what? levers. It's, it's great to be in the gondola yeah. backstage and um, you know it's it's wonderful. I haven't been doing this very long but I'm enjoying it thoroughly. I just you know I'm learning so much Lenny. Thank you. Now uh, It's been so great to be in the company of all these great guys. <laughs> these <coughs> well intellectual. All, yeah, you know what we great. all as a friend of mine said, we all put our pants on the same way. Let's hope we all start to drop our point of view. You can't have a point of view, Mrs. Steele, in an electric age living at the speed of light because everything's moving at high speed, and a point of view depends upon fixity by definition. So when you hear anybody have a point of view and give you a point of view, you know you're dealing with a 19th century mind. Well, it's you must great drop to be able to live in the moment, isn't it? That's what we're doing. We're living in the moment, and we're connecting the dots. Right. Isn't that what we're doing? That's what we're Live doing. Live in the moment. It's simple. But we're drop. We're taking this technique of the suspended, suspended judgment, judgment yeah. and dropping our point of view, yep. and we're starting to organize ignorance for discovery, and yep. we're not taking anything that the media or the government tells us as factual. Matter of fact, the law of averages are that anything that the media or the government tells you is a lie. So that's the important thing you have to start with and be a, a doubting Thomas. Now, one of the doubting Thomases that we should, I want to play the next video of is Philip Berg. He's the man who's on the heels taking um, Obama to court, trying to get him to release his records. Because why would, why would Obama keep his records hidden if well, he had nothing to hide? You know, the, the, the thing I mean, about... What's the national security effect you know, of, keeping is, your, of showing your birth certificate? Is, is it because they want to... Um, First of all, what is the reason behind it? Why would they do that? Why would they what? actually appoint somebody that doesn't have any records that's not a citizen? That's well, a, that's a want, big question right okay, there. Well, the, the, is it because he's the papacy? Like, the papacy. I don't understand the, that. North America has been now a colony of the papacy uh, through its control of the British crown, through its Counter Reformation, and its and leading with I mean, Clay Shaw's assassination of John F. Kennedy and the slow takeover of the United States government and the, the three branches of the United States, they are in control. So they want to put into power who they want in power, not who, not who the people but, want. See, it's not a government of well, or by the I people. I think in basically the United most of the presidents have been put in power by the powers that be. It's, they haven't been elected by the people, except for the ones that have been elected and they weren't doing what the papacy wanted them to do. They were assassinated. Yeah, they were well, given there were the poison some that were elected. Or whatever. Some, some of them were, were elected, elected yeah. but if they tried to go off on their own and do the right thing, they well, didn't last very long, did they? You know, you read Sherman Skolnick's famous articles, The Overthrow of the American Republic, which you can get on the internet at rents.com or at shermanskolnicksreport.com. You can see Skolnick name the seven presidents that were assassinated by the Vatican. Do you think that, I mean, basically Obama is a puppet? He's a puppet. Yeah, he's he does a, what he's told. He's an Othello. He's a noble Moor, a noble Moor in service, service to the Venetian, exactly. the Vatican State. Now, yeah. with that in mind, let's play the Philip Berg interview. Uh, now, we've got to start at the 22nd. Um, I wanted to start at the 22nd mark, but if you can you run it from starting at 20 seconds? Uh, we don't have to play the whole thing. You start it at 20 seconds, and then I'll let you know when we'll stop, okay? Okay, let's go with that. 
She's live now with the very latest. Turn it Philip up. J. Berg tells me since filing this federal lawsuit against Obama in late August, there has been a motion to dismiss the case and a protective order to keep Obama's records private. These motions haven't been decided yet, but Berg is prepared to take the case all the way to the Supreme Court. Berg is a lifelong Democrat.